By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a battle between a goblin deck that I am piloting and I'm sitting on the left with the Force of Nature playmat goblin ball against a skies deck that splashes red and that's the player on the right side and let's see how this is going to play out and uh, this game is the a third round game at the hill giant cup in, in Hilversum the Netherlands an old school tournament and I start there with a goblin balloon brigade my opponent has just played his second land which is a factory and here I go I attack and I play Bloodlust, pumping my Goblin Bloom Brigade to 5-1. And in response, there's the Lightning Bolt. It's a pretty good move. 2 for one there for my opponent. Showing one of the weaknesses of Bloodlust here. It's kind of a risky card, but here it is. A Bull Lightning, and that's a sweet hit. So he's down to 14 there. And that's a sweet hit with the Bull Lightning. Another attack there with the Factory. Going to 16 myself. Another Bull Lightning. So that's 12 damage done by the Bull Lightnings, and that's exactly what I want to do. But it doesn't stop my opponent from playing aggressively, and I'm down to 13 with those factories. I need a Blood Moon. <laughs> There's, there it is. I said it, and there it is. So it means my opponent now has three nice mountains. And there's a Chain Lightning on me. And it looks like I have some control now of the game. And there's a Copper Tablet, a great card when you're ahead. I play play set of copper tablets, passing turn here. I wasn't very successful with this deck, by the way, but this game so far is going really well for me, and the deck is doing what it's supposed to do, dealing 12 damage with bull lightnings and kind of shutting him down here with the blood moon. Playing my fourth land. And there I go, playing a goblin kings. That means that my... Uh, my goblin is a 2-2 now, bringing my opponent back to 5. My goblin is of the Flark, so it now has double mountain walk. And there's a chain lightning. Well timed because I cannot send it back. And now I'm on 8, my opponent's on 4. I play another goblin king, I attack. Bring him down to 2, and he scoops there. So that's game. That went very fast. So the first win here for Goblin Bowl. It's 1-0, let's go to the second game. Game number two, and let's see what's going to happen here. My opponent on the play in the Library of Alexandria, that's bad news. But there is a city in a bottle. Oh, I love when that happens, when you can just use your city to remove a Library of Alexandria. Everything is good. That's what you want to do. And there's a Savannah Lines. And that's interesting, this guy's that can play pretty aggressively as well. And there's a Blood Moon, that's a pro okay, there's a Blue Elemental Blast, so a card there from the sideboard, Blue Elemental Blast, probably added a place out of those, that's a big problem for my deck. There's the first damage dealt this, uh, this game, so I'm on 18 here. It's not looking great for me, because I also have that Factory, so I actually need another, there is another Blood Moon. I play three in the main deck, considering even playing four. And there's a fireball. So my opponent's playing very aggressively here. Probably also knows that, hey, those copper tablets are not as effective when my opponent is behind. Which is absolutely true. But at the moment, he's pretty numb, it seems. He has four basic mountains now. But there's a spell, and there's a Wheel of Fortune. And that's nice, of course, when you play with lightning bolts. It's always a good feeling you kind of, you know, bolt somebody and say, okay, okay, cool, I'll draw seven cards, cards, but first I'm going to bolt you, and there's a pretty big chance I'm going to draw another bolt in the process. Um, but he's on 17 now. I'm still behind on 13, but it looks like I have control over the game, and that's why I play with uh, City in a Bottle and Blood Moon. They're very important components of my Goblin deck. There's a Copper Tablet, so slowly going to get some more damage in now. Hoping to find a, a Bull Lightning as well, especially at this time where it seems he cannot Swords it. And there's an attack from the Gummos of the Flark, putting him down to 15. Passing turn, he goes to 14. And let's see if he can find a way out of this mess. 
There's another damage for me here. A double attack, bring him down to 12. And that means that next turn here we're on the same life totals. And he has to pass turn again. He's losing so many turns here because of that Blood Moon. And there is a, ooh, and a Lightning Bolt on my Goblin King. I wanted to say there's a Goblin King. Um, but the Goblin King went as fast as it came. So, Bolt on the Goblin King. I always like the idea of playing a Swords to Plowseers on the Goblin King. What, what would happen then? Would the Goblin King say one day, Okay, guys, I'm going to start farming now. Oh, what happens here? Wait a minute. There's a uh, Black Lotus. Second for three blue, it seems. He's playing an Ancestral Recall with a red Elemental Blast. And there's a blue Elemental Blast on the Blood Moon. And this is a great play by my opponent. He's luring my red Elemental Blast out by playing that Ancestral Recall because he knows all he, he has to do is get rid of the Blood Moon to get control back over the game, it seems. And I'm making a huge... Uh, I've just made a huge mistake here by choosing to play a red Elemental Blast on his Ancestral Recall because I should have been full on defense with my uh, Blood Moon. So that's a, that's a big mistake here. But when you see an Ancestral Recall and you have a Red Elemental Blast, it's so difficult not to play out your Red Elemental Blast because one of the reasons you play with those beautiful cards is to get rid of that blue power. But okay, it happened. And the question is now, can I still win this game? I mean, he is on eight. But all of a sudden, he has factories. He can play his white spells. He can play every spell now. So this is interesting. And hopefully, he has some um, Arabian Night cards in there. And no disenchant. So my city in the bottle can maybe help me a little bit. And what is he doing now? Is he attacking? It looks like he hasn't tapped any mana for that factory. I mean, he can do me quite some damage, actually. He has three factories on the board. But he also knows I play with Bull Lightnings, and he is on eight life. So he just attacks with the factory, it seems, because I'm going down here. He activates. So yeah, why not? He strips one of my lands. So I'm down on seven. That's the end of it. I'm playing another Goblin King. So that gives my Goblins Mountain Walk again. So they're unblockable, and I can hit him for four here. He wants to block, but it's not possible. So what can my opponent do? Is he going to take the four and then take turn? I mean, I'm on seven. It's pretty low total as well. So let's see what's going to happen here. He seems to be in the tank at the moment. Size to tap. Three mana. Playing a side blast on my Goblin King means he goes down to six. I get flying to my Goblin Bloom Brigade, making it unblockable for my opponent. So he goes to 4 life. Still not dead yet. Tapping a red. And there's a Lightning Bolt, so he'll go down to 1. And when it's his turn in his upkeep, the Copper Tablet will trigger. And that means Goblin Bolt wins this one 2-0. And there you see my glasses on the battlefield. Happy to have won this one. After that blue Elemental Blast on the Blood Moon, I thought I was going to lose. I thought it was a goner. But this is great. I've won my match here at the Hill Giant Cup in Hilversum. If you'd like to see more games of this tournament, you can click on the playlist that's appearing right now. You can also click on the other playlist showing you some more old school magic. Uh, for now, thank you for watching The Timmy Channel, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>